Okay. Thanks, everyone. Obviously, um, it's a, a tumultuous time uh, at the moment with everything that's going on in, in Florida uh, with Hurricane Milton. Um, we wanted to obviously jump on and, and provide everyone an update with where everything's at in regards to uh, the fight between uh, Tim Zhu and Bakram Mertzalayev, um, as well as sort of our fighters on the card, both Tim and Mateo Tapia. Um, so I'll pass over to George to give sort of a brief update to begin with. Um, but as as mentioned, if you have any questions um, that you'd like to ask George, just please either direct message me or um, uh, raise your hand in the icon and I will get to you. But I'll, give, I'll let George just sort of give an overview of where everything's at to begin with. Yeah, hi guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, a bit of a, a bit of a tumultuous last week as we as we found out about the um you know the weather changes over there in the US. It's been a a um a bit of a scramble for all of us at the moment. What I can say is our fighters are safe. Both fighters are safe. Both are still preparing for um what's going to be the biggest fights of the, of their careers. Um, Timmy in particular is still locked in in Vegas. He's um very well zoned in and. Um, as far as we are, uh, we're we're staying in touch with our, our US counterparts as um, closely and as often as we can. And uh, as it stands at the moment, everything is still proceeding as per plan. Um, but we are prepared to uh, make a, a mad dash and a mad change if we have to. I think one thing that we've been able to do here in Australia in the past is we've dealt with uh, the Brisbane floods. You know, we, we actually had that issue over here and we were able to move an event um, within 24 hours and, and make that happen. Obviously, this is a, a larger scale with a world title fight happening over there in Orlando, but um, we've got no hesitation in, in having to move and, and choose a, a safer option um, to ensure that Timmy still gets his, his world title shot and Matteo Tapia gets to continue on, on his trajectory towards the same uh, position as Tim. So um, at the moment, we're staying alert and staying prepared for for every update and um, every every change that happens between now and then. I, I seriously cannot believe how big um, this is, you know, like it's... Uh, uh, you know, we like I said, we thought the floods and everything that we faced here in Australia had been um, the biggest, craziest weather phenomenon that we'd ever have to worry about in in putting on an event. But um, this is huge. This is this is very scary. Um, but it's something that uh, you know I think that we're we're well aware of, and and that we're we're going to make sure that our fighters are safe and that we do make the best decision at the end. But we're ready to move on on whatever we have to do. George, just before I open it up, can you just explain to those that might not know uh, where exactly Tim Zhu is now and also where Matteo Tapia is? Yeah, so um, Matteo, he was actually in a in a dangerous zone, so he's moved to M Miami. Um, he's safer in Miami at the moment and still preparing for his fight. Tim Zhu is based in Vegas at the moment, uh, so he's that's where he's done most of his training camp and he will head from Vegas to Orlando um, if if everything is safe and everything is um, good to go ahead there, but if it's not, he will um, he'll be waiting there in Vegas until advised on what the next step will be. So both fighters are safe and well at the moment, and both continue in their training camps. I might open it up there. I'll start with Brendan um, Bradford. Hey George, um, yeah, like you say. You've you might have to pick up and move. Where, where is the most likely spot that you might be sort of forced to move to? Uh, well, given Tim's based in Vegas at the moment, that he's training there, and and uh, obviously PBC has a has a great relationship throughout Vegas, we would look at that as a option. We'd actually look at anywhere, to be honest, anywhere that's uh, further away from from Hurricane Milton. Um, we would be happy to go anywhere. Do you have a time frame on like when you'll have to make that decision? Is it you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday? It could happen any time um, from now, to be honest. So uh, we're just staying in staying in contact regularly with them over in the US as much as we can, and um, as soon as as soon as we're advised that it's no longer going to be safe and that we need to get the hell out of there, 
um, we'll do that and, and we'll make sure that we have our, our contingencies in place between now and then. We are working on a few options, a few other um, arenas for the fight to be moved to. So we're, we're actively pursuing them in the background while we're waiting for um, a, a definite confirmation on whether we will move. Uh, all those places in Vegas or are there some elsewhere? Um, we're mainly looking at Vegas. Vegas is, is probably the, the, um, the main alternative. To be honest, what what kind of venues like is quite late notice? Like, what kind of venues can you can you get uh, on such a short time frame? Uh, well, lo- like I said, we're very lucky that PBC has a great relationship they do in Vegas, and there, um, one thing that they do have is is access to a lot of venues there. So we do have a couple that we're looking at, um, but I'm hoping that we don't have to tap into to either of them. I'm hoping that everything goes ahead as planned. I'm hoping that everybody in Florida stays safe and that um, we're able to come there and put on a great fight night and everybody's happy and healthy. And whether it stays in Orlando or moves, the plan is definitely for it to be on the 19th or the 20th, that like next weekend, there's no postponements. Yeah, no, the plan is still to stick to that date. The plan is still to turn up there and win a world title and bring Tim Zoo back to Australia as the IBF world champion. And considering you know, everything that's gone into this fight, you know, this weekend, this venue, what kind of sort of financial hit would it be to have to move it or, you know, what it, you know, move it to Vegas or wherever else? What kind of, what are you looking at? Yeah, look, it's always a hit whenever you've got to make late changes like this. Um, even the, even setting up the contingencies at the moment, you take a hit doing that. So whether we, even if we do still stay at uh, Orlando, we still do, still take a hit because of the contingencies that we have to put in place. Um, but it's all part of the game. That's that's the risk of being a promoter. You put you put everything out there on the line, and um, it's it's the risk that you take. And all, all the risk obviously falls on the promoters. And we just make sure that we can provide the best event for our fighters to fight at, and for for the public to get to view some great boxing. Cheers, George. Oh. All right, I'll um, pass over to Abraham Gonzalez. Hey, George. Good evening or good afternoon for you. Um, man, so listen, at the end of the day, the, this is boxing and it's a business. Um, even if let's say it, it does, it doesn't impact as much. Um, it's so close to that fight date. Um, might be a hard sell to try to get people to go to a boxing event a few days post a hurricane. Um, I have to believe that that decision to to move off of Orlando has to be, you know, before the the week's end, right? Yeah, look, absolutely. It's like I said, it's the risk that you take as a promoter is that um, you know, being put into this situation, it's it's everything's put on the line um by the promoter. You know, the the thing that we want to make sure though is that we've got a, a safe venue and a safe place for our fighters to fight at. And uh, uh at the end of the day for the fighter no matter where they end up at, they're still going to be in that same that same squared circle. So they'll they'll still be able to prepare as best as they can. But for us, um, for the promoter, obviously the the biggest risk is is on the promoter. Yeah, and and Bakram, is he? Do you know if he's already down there in Florida, or uh, is is he um, northeast where he he still has to wait to try to travel? Well, that's a that's a great question. We've actually had a lot of difficulty in getting hold of of Bakram and and getting some um, getting some access to him for us. You know, for us over here in Australia, we really wanted to be able to talk to him and be able to get a lot out of him and and uh, help him uh, help help promote the fight here in Australia. But uh, that's been very difficult for us. We did get some comment from him, and um, you know, he does seem very confident. But as far as being able to have regular contact with him, it's been very difficult. Yeah, um, so I, early, it's it's funny because earlier this evening I spoke to Kathy Duva from Main Events, um, and I asked her if, hey, you know, with this storm, um, is there a possibility of it being delayed? Is there a Plan B? Um, uh, she had told me that she had not been informed of a Plan B, and that fingers crossed for now. So um, obviously she's in in intact with that, but um, but yeah, I think it's it's a situation where uh, this. It might have to be the sooner the better to to make a decision like that because um, uh, the fight is next next Saturday, and then we you know you still have press conferences and weigh-ins and commissions and all that. 
Um, some of the Vegas uh, venues that you were uh, you were talking about, I'd have to assume like the Cosmo or or a small venue like that that you can probably fill up uh, pretty quickly in that local Vegas area. I'm assuming, right? Something like that. Yeah, late notice is always difficult, and and as I mentioned before too. We could get off this Zoom and, and five minutes later, um, the call comes through and we do confirm a change. If that happens, you know, everyone will be notified as soon as possible. But uh, the sooner I think that we can make a decision and, and can move forward, um, the better it is for everyone. But yeah, also, you know, for the fighters, obviously Buckram is going to still prepare to fight and defend his world title and and Tim Zhu is still going to prepare to turn up and, and take that world title from him. Okay. All right. That, that's uh, Those are all the questions that I have. I, I hope everything works out for you guys. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, we've got Dane Lillingston from Fox Sports News. Yeah. Hey, George. Uh, just wanted to clarify, mate. You said anywhere before. No crazy plans to come to Australia, nothing like that. Well, look, if we had this in Australia, this wouldn't be a, a problem. We wanted to have this fight in Australia, and it would have been a... A, uh, a fantastic fight here. There's definitely no hurricanes going on in Sydney right now. Um, it's a it's the safest place you can be on the planet. So if we were able to get uh, Buckram here to, to Australia to take the fight, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We'd probably be all um, excited in fight week mode over here and and preparing for what was what would have been a, a great major event to have here in Australia. But given that we weren't able to get him here to take the fight here, um, we're in the situation that we're in now. So, yeah. And it's just far as Tim, I know he said some things already, but he's fine training wise. Nothing's really going to impact him during this. No, well, that's the thing. Vegas is still Vegas. He's still doing his training camp. Um, he's still very much on track to to get in there and and win that world title and um, do Australia proud. So he's very much still deep into camp and he's preparing for that date and preparing for for everything as per schedule. So we just got to make sure that we can dot all our eyes and cross all our T's and make sure that he's in the in the position to to get in there and do what he's got to do. And I know just a story a few days ago, his dad's finally going to come watch him fight for the first time in eight years. Is, is this going to affect anything? Is the hope that he obviously can still make it and watch him fight? Yeah, look, I, I think if he can make his way to, to Orlando, he can make his way to anywhere. So um, Vegas is only just down the road, a short flight away. So no matter where it ends up or, or what ends up happening, um, I'm sure he'll still be there and still 100% supportive of Tim, as will the, the rest of the Zoo family. Thanks, George. No worries. And just pass it on to uh, Jay Mc... Uh, so we've got And Still Boxing, the guys from And Still Boxing first, and then Jay. Hello, George. How are you? Um, considering all these logistical issues, and obviously you want to get, you know, make sure the lemon's worth a squeeze, what is the likelihood of perhaps it being pushed back maybe a week or two if there is a requirement to uh, move it to Las Vegas or anything like that? Or it's a hard date, this must happen now? Our preference is to stick to the date. Um, one thing that we've always been able to do is that no matter what has been thrown at us, uh, we still do try to stick to the date because I know how much effort goes into these fighters preparing the way that they have to, and um, you know the how how important every every second is for for these guys when they're cutting weight and to know um, what's on track. So the preparation's been done for them to be prepared to fight for that date. We'll do absolutely everything in our power to stick to that date, um, whether that's got to be in Orlando or at a, a separate location. We'll do everything that we can to make sure that we stick to that because I, I just want them to, to get the best preparation and the best opportunity they can to come and do Australia proud. Perfect. And with uh, Bakwan Mertazayalev, he's obviously done a lot of his uh, training camp in Florida. Has the recent weather conditions affected his preparation by any means? Obviously, he's safe and we know that, but... Uh, Obviously, the weather's been quite bad for quite a while now. Do you know of anything like that? Yeah, look, it's been very rough. And as I mentioned before, background's been very hard to uh, for us to get contact to. We really wanted to to give everybody here um, access to him and to be able to talk to him and, and um, you know, get some information out of him leading up to this fight because 
Um, it, there's two people in this fight, but at the moment it feels like Timmy Zhu is doing all the heavy lifting. He's making himself available for everyone. Um, he's He's been fantastic to talk to, and that's the thing about Tim is that he does make himself available, and then he's got time for people. He sits there and he likes to chat. He likes to talk boxing. He likes to talk about what he's doing. So um, he's done a fantastic job in promoting this fight, but it's been very difficult to get hold of um, Bakram and, and the rest of the team to, you know, to be able to talk about this fight and let everyone get excited about um, that IBF belt that he currently carries that Tim is about to own. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Jay McAllister. Hey, George. Um, mentioned a little bit before, but... Just on Tim, is he sort of fully across this? Is this something that, that you speak to him on the daily or is it something you keep Tim Zhu out of and just let him focus on on the training? There's there's a broad discussion around it. There's not it's it's not something that we want to be I stay clear of him as much as I can while he's in camp. You know, what he needs to know, we make sure that he knows. But um they've got such a a strict and and um effective process that they follow for every fight. Uh, their their training camps are so so effective. So um, the less that we can be in his face, the less that we can be, um, you know, talking to him, the better. So he is across everything that's going on, and um, for him, his response is always anywhere, anytime. So uh, he's he's had to make late changes before. He's not afraid of that. He you know he he's he's happy to put his hand up for no matter what's thrown at him. So. Uh, whether whether there's changes to the venue, um, changes to you know what what happens or or how it happens, he's ready. He's focused. Seems to be a common occurrence for Tim Zoo fight. Um, Keith Thurman pulls out. Fondora goes in. Um, had the dog bite with Carlos Campo last year. Had the the two Charlo fights fall through. Um, you must be sort of wondering what what you guys have done wrong. Well, every every time something like this happens, I sit there and think, okay, fa fine, we've faced it all. There are no more curveballs that we can ever face leading into a fight. And then a hurricane happens, not just any hurricane, the biggest hurricane that they've seen in, I don't even know, is, is this the biggest one that they've ever, I hear you talk that this this is the biggest hurricane that they've ever recorded in the area. So um, I don't know a whole lot about, you know, hurricanes and weather and that, but uh, they're throwing it at us. They're well and truly throwing it at us. But we'll take it. You know, it, it is what it is. All it does is means that, you know, this journey for, for Tim Zhu, this journey to Undisputed that he's been on for so long, um, it's just another hurdle for him to cross. No road is easy uh, for him to get to where he's at. So um, this just this will just add to the story. We'll be sitting around um, having a few beers to this one in a few years' time, hopefully, and and talking about the time that we nearly got wiped out by a hurricane. Thanks. All right, uh, I believe we've got one more, Jabin. Hey, George. What sort of um, issues or delays would you face essentially with the Nevada State Athletic Commission to get it sanctioned? Is there any delays with that, or can PBC, being PBC, do that pretty quickly? Um, I'll I'll leave that one to them. To answer, um, I know that they've got a very good relationship um, with Nevada, and and obviously they've got the track record with the the events that they've they've delivered in the state before, and and what they're capable of doing. So um, I'll leave that one to them. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very confident that whatever we've got to do, we'll be able to get it done. And being in Vegas, do you think there's an opportunity there? I guess if it was delayed maybe a week or two, I guess we've said that, and you are staunch on the 19th slash 20th, but to, you could potentially bolster the undercard there as well with some stars that are just happen to be floating around Vegas. Yeah, look, the the opportunity for that is is definitely there. Um, there's also, also the risk of me having to spend an extra week in Vegas, which is not a good thing. Um, as we all know, uh, an extra week in Vegas can, can bring – myself undone it won't bring timmy undone timmy's um timmy's going to be well focused and well trained but um yeah another week in vegas uh could do a bit of damage for the rest of us and just finally uh, for tim in particular although he had his sights set on orlando in respect to those in the hurricane but he does love las vegas and i think for him it might even be a little well you know i would have loved to be here since day one so it's his almost his second home outside of australia 
Well, it is his second home at the moment. He's spent months on uh, months on end there at the moment. Like that's his that's his main training camp place. That's where he's doing everything at the moment. So um, it's very much home for him. So it's a home fight if it does end up there. And um, I, you know, I, I mentioned before, Tim will fight anywhere, anytime, any place. And if we're able to get this fight in Australia, he would have been here proudly uh, representing Australia and, and and winning his world title here on home soil. But we're in the situation that we're in where we're hopeful that. Um, you know the safety of everyone in Florida is is first and foremost, but hopeful also that we can get a, a tremendous event on on the the nineteenth slash twentieth of October um, for Tim Zoo to to win another world title. Thank you.